Now, a small part of the Nordic region has actually been created in this newly developed part of central London. And rather than copy the original Aquavit in New York, the owners instead decided to create a large brasserie, with op which is open also for breakfast, lunch and dinner. The focus here is on traditional dishes from the Nordic regions, and the food is all about colour, freshness and flavour. And the smorgasbord dishes are fantastic, and there is something truly wholesome about the cooking here. Now, Henrik, if I can just tell you, um, the editor actually gave me some recommendations uh, okay. just the other day as to where to eat in London. And I actually, I chose Aquavit oh, because I'm half Danish. And so I know a good herring when I eat one. Um, and if I can say, that was a very good herring. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I mean, this is a yeah, huge achievement for the whole team at Aquavit. And it's been uh, in an incredibly hard working year. And, uh, you know, this is incredible recognition for all the guys and girls who work very hard at Aquavit. Yeah. And it's all about those fantastic ingredients and flavors. Yeah, it's, you know, it's all about the ingredients and, uh, you know, you know putting, you know, not overcomplicating things. We're trying to make things very simple and, uh, yeah, keep it straightforward. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's obviously paid off. <laughs> it obviously has paid off. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Aquavit has quite a reputation, so yeah. was it harder or easier given that? Well, I guess because uh, we have a two, there's a two Michelin star restaurant in New York with Emma Banks on at the helm. You know, she's an amazing chef and uh, we opened Aquavit uh, London to be a quite different uh, restaurant to the one in New York. This is more of a sort of brasserie, deluxe kind of feel to it, much more sort of uh, informal and, uh, you know, I guess it's meant to be like, uh, you know, you come out and have fun and you eat, you know, good food. That's all, all it was about. And we wanted to introduce, you know, a nice Nordic, both traditional and uh, traditional with a contemporary twist uh, food. And uh, we keep it really simple and it's all about the ingredient and the flavor combinations and the balance of the flavors. Uh, and uh, I guess it's paid off. Uh, I don't know, we, were, we weren't really... We weren't aiming to get a mission to start, we weren't working towards that goal. That was, you know, we were just doing what we wanted to do, really. And uh, yeah, they've, it's obviously paid off. Uh, it's incredible, yeah. How is this to do Nordic cuisine in London? Uh, I think it's pretty, uh, you know, it's fairly easy. It's a bit, you know, some people don't quite understand it, maybe, because it's a bit different from uh, usual British fare. But, um, I think it's been well received and it's kind of on trend as well, being Nordic and, uh, you know, the design and the different... How do you, how do you separate yourself from the trend? Is that yeah, something you need to plan or natural? Well, we kind of, instead of being the new Nordic, which is the big trend, which, uh, you know, big chefs like Rene Redzepi started, really, um, we're kind of going back to more the kind of classic Nordic cooking, but doing it in more of a modern way. So. Uh, I guess that's how we kind of different from, from, from the rest of the kind of trendy Nordic restaurants. What do you think brought the Michelin star to the restaurants? Well, I think, you know, I think uh, we, we managed to be very consistent uh, and we do something that's slightly different, slightly different combinations. Uh, it's honest food. Uh, it's not overcomplicated. Um, I think it's uh, you know what people want to eat when they go out and eat. Certainly, what I want to eat, not not because I'm Swedish, but it's uh, you know it's we don't take ourselves too seriously. We we we, we want to be quite lighthearted, uh, you know, and then but still making sure that you know it takes a lot of effort to simple food is not always not is always easiest. It's, 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 it takes a lot of uh, effort to do simple food well, and it's all about the ingredient really, and uh, you know. Leave, leaving, it speak, leaving it to speak for itself. You know. There are a few, well, more than a few, high-profile chefs in Sweden. Do you yeah. have anyone in particular you think about every now and then in terms of food and style? Uh, I wouldn't say there's anyone in particular that I think is sort of, that I take, that I draw inspiration from, but I love uh, Matthias Dahlgren, what he does. Uh, I like Bjorn Francais and uh, Magnus Nilsson at Fair Weekend. And, uh, uh, Daniel uh, Berlin down in, uh, in Skåne as well in south of Sweden. Um, you know, there's lots of really good, high quality chefs that work in, in, in Sweden and, and throughout the Nordic region. Um, and yeah, you always, you know, you always take some inspiration for something. I try, you know, 
try to kind of take inspiration for this for this restaurant. It's mostly about kind of the childhood memories and bringing those flavors back for me and working with Emma as a ball plank, you know, coming up with ideas and then with the team in the kitchen, you know, we all kind of we try and communicate as much as possible about what we want to do. And we want to be quite transparent with the team in the kitchen and what we want to do. So everyone's kind of part of it. Um, and, that's, and I think that's very important because you can't just, it's, you know, you want to be creative. But it's very hard to be creative if you're just sort of looking at one direction the whole time and you kind of want to open yourself up. When you work on a dish, how many attempts does it, does it take until it's like ready for the menu? Well, sometimes it can happen. You know, maybe it's two times. You know, you think you think of a dish, and it's you know you you haven't. Sometimes it's almost better not to think too much about a dish. I feel, I feel the dishes that are the best ones at the restaurant are the things that we haven't thought too much about. Because often you can, if you overthink a dish, and it becomes almost uh, and it becomes overcomplicated, and it's not it takes away from the purity of the dish or the flavor of the ingredient. So often it's a nice, just you come up with an idea and you try it and it, oh it works. Or we just have to, then it's more of a balancing thing and you just adjust the balance. Maybe it needs a bit more texture or needs, maybe it needs more acidity, maybe it needs more sweetness, a bit of bitterness, salt. And you kind of work you know, towards, and I find that's a nice way of working because you, uh, you can get inspired about things all the time. So we kind of, you know, try and get the guys involved as well in the kitchen we do a, we do a prefix menu for lunch which we use as a kind of we use it to try out dishes on and see how people react on them and how they work for service because you have to think about everything when you create a dish it's not just does it taste good and so on you have to think about how does it work for service is it going to be you know is it you know cost of the dish are we going to make enough money on the dish is there going to be a lot of waste on it you know, there's so many things that goes into creating a dish um, but you know, yeah, some of them have taken longer to create and you have to redo and redo and redo until you get happy and it, I guess it's one of those things you have to be very stubborn as a chef. <laughs> <laughs> so next service you're going to be a Michelin star chef. Yeah. What, what was that going to bring to the kitchen or change in the kitchen, you think? Well, first of all, I think it's going to bring, uh, you know, it's going to bring... Will you celebrate? For we're going to celebrate, yeah. <laughs> we're going to celebrate for a week, for a month, <laughs> maybe six months, who knows. <laughs> you know. You know, because they've got a big team there, and they, they're a great team, and they all worked incredibly hard, so they deserve the recognition. It's, uh, you know, it's not just I've been there; I'm just there as a guy. A guy I'm a guidance. You know, I, I'm there to to guide the guys. I'm not, you know, I'm not pulling the hard work every day out and day in that they do and create the food and make it consistent.